This is Affinity Photo. It came out just this past week for the iPad. If you look at the site for this app, it's all about photography. If you look at the tutorials for this app, it is all about photography. If you look at what is presented on stage at Apple's WWDC last week, it's all about photography. The name of the app is Photo. So why on earth am I drawing in it? Because I can. And you can draw really, really well with it. Affinity Photo is just like Photoshop on the desktop. And like Photoshop, it may be focused on photography, but you can do so much more. Vector, typography, layer adjustments, all of it. The reason this app is a big deal is because it is a pro level app. I've said it over the years in many of my videos that the iPad Pro really needs some pro level apps. And in the discussions of my videos, there have been many, many conversations that I've had with others uh, back and forth about what constitutes a pro level app. And I can say for sure that anybody who checks out Affinity Photo there is no doubt in anyone's mind that this is definitely a pro level app. From the beginning, the settings that you're gonna find in this app, as soon as you create a new document, are incredibly robust. You're not just setting up a canvas size, you're selecting units, and there's a bunch of predefined sizes, and you could even dive in and use a different color profile. The amount of depth in those settings just continues as you use the app more and more. Affinity Photo aims to be just as good as its desktop counterpart. What really blows me away is how well they do that. Every other iPad app that I've reviewed, after sitting with it for an afternoon or an hour or two, I understand pretty much everything that the app has to offer. Maybe not all the ins and outs, but the core features I know pretty well. That's not the case here. I feel that after days of using it, I'm still not quite familiar enough with it to review it. That's why I'm just trying it out here. There is so much to cover here. For example, I can export this to the desktop very easily. I can export this as a Photoshop document. I can also import in various formats. Heck, it can even export vectors. I've also read that eventually, if it doesn't already have it now, you're gonna have the ability to import brushes that are created on the desktop into the iPad app as well. So there is just so much integration between the iPad and the desktop. Even though overall I've been really impressed with this app and everything that it can do because it is a brand new app, there are some bugs that I've run into. The main the main one was that the color picker would often stop working for me after a while. While I have a brush selected, if I long press anywhere on the canvas, I can select that color. And after a while, it just stopped working. At one point, I found this so annoying that I thought I'm just going to quit out of the program and come back in and see if that actually gets the color picker to start working for me again. And when I did that, my drawing was completely gone. This is a drawing I had been working on for about two hours, and the app auto saved. So I assumed that over the course of that time, it would have auto save that drawing at some point, but it was completely gone. So I suggest that if you're going to force close this program that you actually go back to the gallery first before doing that. Now over the years, my workflow really relied pretty heavily on using vectors. Usually I'd sketch something out in Photoshop, I'd move it over to Adobe Illustrator where I'd block out my main shapes and vector, and then I'd move it back over to Photoshop to do some of the detail touch up work. Now over the past year, as I've gotten more used to the iPad's workflow, I've more or less abandoned vectors. No more here in this program, I I can actually create vector shapes in in one program just by adding a couple features they have created the iPad's best vector app as well yeah I know pretty low bar to jump over these guys also created an app called affinity designer and that is heading to the iPad sometime in the future as well but with more features comes a much steeper learning curve in my first couple hours with the app I constantly found myself asking can I do this can I do that and the answer was always yes. It was just a matter of finding it and figuring out how to do it. And overall, in that very first session when I sat down with the app, I just didn't get a lot of work done. This is very different than most other iPad drawing apps I've used, where as soon as you open them up, you grab a brush and you can start sketching and you just kind of grab the features as you need them. Here, there's definitely a learning curve. And I'm not putting this out there as a complaint, just, just a heads up. It's just a matter of fact that the more powerful an app is, the more you have to learn about it in order to use it effectively. Since the app is built for photography, the tools are laid out in a way that's conductive to photo retouching and editing and workflow. So it's not necessarily an illustrator's workflow, which is totally understandable. The program is set up using this concept called personas. There's an editing persona, which is primarily where I am. There's a selection persona. There's some color adjustment personas and things like that geared towards photography as well. In one way, this keeps you from being overwhelmed by all the tools at once. In another way, it means that when you're going to grab a tool, you have to search various sections of the app 
shop to find it. And overall, I was really surprised at how good the brushes looked and felt. Now I was really surprised how many brushes there are here. We've got our basic, our painting, our drawing, our spray paints, our texture, our effects, our daub brushes, our daub dry media, our daub gushes. I'm probably slaughtering that word. I should learn how to pronounce it our daub inks, and our daub markers, as well as daub watercolors. And then we're back to our basics. I haven't found my favorite brushes yet or the right settings for those brushes, I should say. So right now, the brushes do feel a little bit off to me. I can't quite put my finger on it, and it's probably just familiarity. Once I select a brush, all the adjustments I need for it are right down here at the bottom. There's a little toolbar. You can adjust the width, the opacity, the flow, the hardness. You can even change the color. I can even tap on more to bring up more. As you can see, there's a good number of settings here. I can tap on dynamic dynamics and I'm going to get a lot of curves that I can go in and adjust and fiddle with. And if my brush has a texture, this one doesn't, I can tap on texture and I can see those as well. I'm going to tap cancel because I'm done with that brush. And I want to show you the brush itself. If I just start using this brush, it's just a standard brush. It's putting a line down there. Uh, there's some other options like this one actually turns on the pressure sensitivity. So if I draw a light, to dark, you can see the pressure sensitivity in there. Right below pressure sensitivity, there's this icon which makes it a wet brush, which is going to give you a different effect and you can kind of overlay paint that way. It's just kind of a nice way to build things up. So that's a easy way to get to that feature. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that off and talk about this other one. This is the alpha lock. The alpha lock, I'm gonna tap that and I'm gonna change my color and show you what happens when I use that. Now, if I draw anywhere, it's not going to work, but if I draw on something that already exists, it's going to paint within the paint that I have already put down. Usually the alpha lock is actually tied to the layer. This time it is tied to the brush that you're using, so you can turn that on or off. Uh, I always have a habit of uh, using alpha lock and then forgetting to turn that off on the brush. So that is something I've had to get used to. Also, I should, should point out the layers over here on this side are separate from a lot of their settings. So for example, if I want to change the opacity, I have to go to the FX area after selecting the right layer. And now I can slide this up and down and change the opacity. There is a whole lot to love in Affinity Photo, but there are a lot of things that are missing that are in other drawing apps that are just kind of absent here. For example, I've gotten used to using two fingers tapped on the screen to do and undo. Also, you can't just take your fingers, twist to rotate your canvas. I really miss that at first. A lot of those hand gestures have just become second nature to me from other apps like AstroPad Studio or Procreate. So this is probably the most exciting iPad app that I've ever used. And not necessarily because it's the best drawing iPad app that I've ever used, but it really shows the potential of what a pro app can be on the iPad. This thing can legitimately do anything that you can do on the desktop. And when you pair this with some of the new iOS 11 features that we saw just last week, you can see where the iPad is going. They're really turning this into a real solution, something that could replace your laptop. That's where the iPad's heading. All we have to do is wait. So those are my impressions. Again, not a review, just kind of an overall, you know, feel for this. In, in my reviews, what I like to do is I like to cover all the features and everything. And I just found that here, that's next to impossible. I kind of ran into that last summer when I did a review of Affinity Designer. Does the, eh, Affinity Designer, and a lot of people called me out in the comments, hey, you missed this feature, what about this, what about this? And I think realistically, when you're looking at an app of this size, it's really hard to cover everything. And obviously I'm covering it from the point of view of an illustrator, because that's what I do. So thank you for watching, really appreciate you making it to the end here. And I also appreciate everybody who supports me over on Patreon, even the folks who are only giving like a dollar or two a month, all that adds up and all of that helps me out. Uh, again, the people who also click on the Amazon links down below in the description, are hugely helpful as well. That's all I've got. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below or hit me up on Twitter and I'll see you in a few days.